So here's what happens <laughs> in, a, in a growing close relationship. A problem comes up, but we don't want to address the problem in us. And welcome back to another episode of Five Ideas. Today, we're talking relationships. And more specifically, we're talking about when problems come up in relationships, whose fault is it? Is it my fault or is it their fault? Because obviously it has to be somebody's fault. And a lot of times it's very unclear whose fault it is. So whose fault is it, Rich? My fault or their fault? Let's just let's just answer the question. Well, there's a third option. Both of you. Okay. Uh let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's dive into that. Yeah, absolutely. Think about it for a moment. How many times have you heard over and over again, it takes two to tango? So if it takes two to tango, it takes two to untangle. Oh. And oftentimes <laughs> in relationship messes, you have tangled up long-term situations. And so we want to untangle them. It takes two. One okay. person's not going to do it. So I was being a little bit facetious in the beginning. I know that sometimes there can be multiple... You know, there could be multiple, but oftentimes when you're in the heat of the moment, you're mm -hmm. like, whose fault is this? Is it my mm -hmm. fault or their fault? And oftentimes it's their fault for sure. You know, when you're in the heat of the moment, sometimes when you take a step back, you're like, yeah, maybe I could have done this better. Maybe they, they could have done this better. Um, but why, why is it that we tend to point the finger first instead of looking at ourselves? Yeah, well, that's human nature, isn't it? And you're, you're right. Anything in the heat of battle becomes emotional. Mm. Okay, so and once something becomes emotional, logic is thrown out. <laughs> so you typically logically can't see your part in it. You're only seeing the other person's sure. part in it. So that's the simple question. The simple answer to that question is, you know, we're in the heat of battle, and that's the enemy, and they did something to hurt me. So I'm going to fight or I'm going to flight. Um, but the reality of it is oftentimes when we settle down, when the heat is gone, you start to think about it and you start to think about your reactions and your responses, and now you become a little bit more logical versus emotional. Okay, okay. And, and again, relationships, they don't have to just be – like we're not just talking about dating or marriage. Typically when people use the word relationship, it's – the immediate context is like, oh, you know, my relationship with my significant other. But relationships include, you know, parent-child, boss-employee, employee-employee, workplace relationships, friend-friend, yeah. brother, sister, sibling, and, mm -hmm. and of course, marriage, dating, mm -hmm. all those things as well. But what, what really is the essence? Because problems arise all the time. Mm -hmm. Problems are inevitable. Mm -hmm. And what really is, because we talk, you, you just explained, like we usually like to point the finger and mm -hmm. blame, mm -hmm. but what really would be the, what's a way to kind of notice that you're in that mm -hmm. illogical? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's probably hard, but like, right. is there a way that you can actually, because you just said, you know, when you get into that mode where you're in the heat of the moment, logic kind of flees away. Is there a strategy you can actually implement mm -hmm. that I can actually implement to kind of catch myself going into that mode before I get there? Yeah, there is. Um, and definitely, and we'll talk about that. But let me go back just a step because you're onto something. And okay. Let's just go to a, a platonic friend relationship, not husband, wife, but just... You know, the most people will tell you that if they could just have one really good close friend, they would feel pretty good about that. Hmm. So in our world today, a, a lot of people have lots of acquaintances, and guess what? A lot of friends on Facebook <laughs> or social media, right? But we know that that's not a true test of a true relationship. Right. So most people that could have just a couple of really strong, connective relationships would feel blessed and maybe lucky or blessed in life, right? So why is that? Why is that so difficult? That's true. Just to have one That's true. or two relationships that are so strong and so healthy. And I'll tell you why. All right. It's because 
for that to happen, you have to be vulnerable. You have to be open with your weaknesses. You have to trust. There has to be all of these things happen, but the main thing, all right, the main thing above all is this. Going back to our theory Get here ready at Five for Ideas. It. Get ready for it. We believe the problem isn't the problem. Oh. So here's what happens <laughs> in, a, in a growing close relationship. A problem comes up, but we don't want to address the problem in us. Wow. And we avoid, we avoid it. We avoid the problem at all costs because to confront the problem means we're going to have to confront something in us because, right, takes two to tango. Right. And so we avoid it instead of attacking it. Listen, you said something earlier. You said every relationship has problems, right? Yep. I'm going to go a step further. Every good, healthy relationship, it is necessary to have problems. You cannot get closer. You cannot connect. You cannot have that type of relationship that everybody's looking for that's lifelong unless you have problems because problems is actually what brings you together and makes you stronger. Something just clicked in my mind, and I'm going to present it to you because I've actually never had this thought before. Like you, you were just talking about how I'd mentioned every relationship has problems. But I was thinking like of the times when I wasn't really, I mean, you're always in a relationship, but I'm like, I've had problems that had nothing to do with relationships. Mm-hmm. They just had to do with me. Mm-hmm. Like I've got problems and I just had an, I-, I just had an idea. You could look at it two ways. You could say, I have problems by myself. This person has problems by themselves. If we come together, we actually now have double the trouble. Double the trouble, but double the power to solve. Exactly. Exactly. Two ways to look at it. Yeah, that's that's good. I like that. Double the power to solve the problem Mm -hmm. and a new perspective to look at it to say, yeah, you have you have that problem, but you also have a strength. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one can put one thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 a flight and it's better for two than just one because if it's cold Mm -hmm. you know they can keep each other warm there's different Mm -hmm. things you can do you can Mm -hmm. motivate each other you can give each Mm -hmm. other you know I'm I'm quoting stuff I'm not Mm -hmm. exactly (laughs) saying Mm -hmm. it to to a T but two are better than one Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah long term relationships or even just healthy relationships that you can depend on they're not perfect there's, there's, there's issues, but if you're willing, if you're really willing to look at that problem as necessary to your growth and necessary to your development, you know, that's, that's what makes you stronger. Typically, a real good relationship has gone through a really difficult time, but they've survived it. And if they survive it, it's strong. You know, you get the whole expression, guys who go overseas and fight together, our military, mm-hmm. um, the band of brothers, you know, the band of sisters, whatever you want to call it. it. It's when all these forces are coming against them and everything is being challenged. Mm. Um, you know, every fiber of their being is challenged and they have to trust somebody. They have to trust their commander. They have to trust their leaders. They have to trust their brothers. When they come back from that, they're they're bound together in life because of what they fought were the problems coming at them. Mm-hmm. Follow up question. Yeah. As you're talking, I'm like, you said problems are necessary. Mm-hmm. So my question is, are problems bad? Because you use them, you know, pe- well, not you, but people. We we tend to use them synonymously. Bad problem solution good are problems inherently bad i wouldn't label them bad i I, and i wouldn't label them good they're just a problem Hmm. they're a problem to be solved they're a problem to be addressed they're a problem to be embraced um but and and let let me just jump to long-term marriage because i've been married 39 years wow and i will tell you 
the strength of a long-term marriage is you you go through so much together. And if you can pull together through those times, you become a force after a while. Because there's always a time when one person, their A-game's not on. Mm-hmm. But if the other person has been through it with you before, they can help you. And it just goes back and forth and back yeah. and forth. So, you know... The pro- all those problems over all those years where other, some people, and I'm not trying to promote one thing or another, but where some people say, well, you know, I'm just going to give up and go over here. Here's, here's the problem. The problem <laughs> is because you are part of the problem, you take part of that problem in that relationship wherever Whoa. you go. You take it wherever you go. You're saying a problem is not bad or good inherently. And I'm wondering if there's a strategy to kind of pre-determine, because I'm thinking about when you buy a car, you know your tires are going to, you know your tires are going to wear out. You know your oil is going to need to be changed. You know you're going to run out of gas. Those all seem like problems to me. But you're not as frustrated with those problems because you pre were aware of those problems and you pre had a plan for those problems. And like, yeah, my tire's wearing out. That's a problem. I wish they wouldn't wear out, but that's just how it is because somebody hasn't solved how to make a sure. tire that lasts forever, but that's a problem. Sure. And because in my mind, I'm pre-planned for that problem. Is it possible that a lot of times with relationships, we don't ever pre-plan for there to be problems, so we don't prepare for the problem and how we're going to respond? We're just always caught off guard by it? We probably know there's going to be a problem, but we don't prepare. Mm. And there's a couple of things I'm going to suggest right now to jump into strategy because you shifted now. We've t- we've been talking about philosophically what a problem is and isn't. And now we've shifted to strategy, yep. which is great because we want to give our listeners strategy. So here's a strategy for this. The number one strategy is expect. If you, if you go into a relationship expecting problems, you won't get caught off guard. Hmm. And, and people go, sometimes people go into relationships, especially you know, when, when people are dating or the early stages of romance and it's it's just all, you know, bl- blinded by love sort of thing. But you got to understand you're a human being, so you're going you're gonna to have those types of conflicts. Yep. Second thing you've got to do when it comes to relationships is you've got to determine what level of commitment this relationship's going to be for you. There's some relationships that are just going to be surfacey. That's Okay. But for, for those that, that are worth kind of that deeper level, you got to know what you're going to be committed to. And so what that commitment means is that when you face an issue, you have to communicate. Interesting. There has to be a communication. Okay? So okay. So those, those three things right there. So your commitment level is... Because there are some relationships that aren't as close or not as strong. They don't mm-hmm. last as long. They're mm-hmm. just kind of like normal like mm-hmm. you, if you if you work at a you know you work at a job and you have to you know complete certain tasks with certain employees but you never really have to go any deeper right those relationships and actually usually they don't seem to have as many problems either it's kind of like the deeper you go the more problems there are but it's not necessarily they 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 might not the the problem might be there but the emotional attachment's not Whoa. So when the emotional attachment's not there, it doesn't seem like a big problem. So you're saying problem, if I'm doing my math correctly, you're saying problems can actually be magnified by emotion. Right. And the and the higher the level of the commitment, the more emotion's going to be involved in the relationship. Because there's more on the line. Exactly. And that's where if you're really committed, you've got to get to that third step to communicate. For example, let's just like, for example, right here. All right, we got three business partners. All right, so we're a business partner, so we have got to communicate. Yep, we're committed. We're committed to five ideas. All right, we're just going transparent now, right? Yep, there. absolutely. So if if there's something not right, I'm going to come to you and say, hey, Joey, are you okay? Are we good? Mm-hmm. Um, what is is everything feeling right? Is this sound right? And you might say, well, I. I kind of felt like I kind of misinterpreted something you said about that. Okay, let's talk about that. Let's work through that. That's when you start to go, okay, problems do arise, but there's always a way to 
cut them off at the pass, going back to how do I prepare? How do we plan? How do I feel it coming? Mm-hmm. Well, there has to be a little bit of in, in, intuitiveness in a relationship to go, mm, that, that, that thing doesn't feel right, so let me zero in by asking a few questions. You're getting ahead of it. Yeah. Yep. That's getting awesome. Out in front. And I think, like, <laughs> the show, this show, this episode started out with a question, and that question was, Am I the problem or are they the problem? And Rich took it a completely different direction, which is essentially, you said, it could be both, Mm -hmm. and oftentimes it is both. So a lot of the strategy we've been talking about, we have, you've never, you have not once mentioned to me, I need to go tell that person how to be better and how to solve their end of the issue and how to do this and that and go tell them like, hey, you shouldn't have talked to me that way. Hey, you shouldn't even mention that. No. And a lot of times I feel like that's how people do try to solve their problems is yeah. they go to the other person and say, don't you respect me? Like, yeah. why did you talk to me like that? You shouldn't talk to me like that. And I think it is important to understand right. how you feel, but you haven't mentioned no that approach yet. Is because that a part of it? Is that a, a, a solid way to do it or no? You can, but it's, I don't believe... I don't believe it's the five ideas way. All right, I'll take it. <laughs> okay, I believe the five ideas way of handling tough conflict in a relationship. Not everybody wants to resolve the relationship, right? Not everybody. So you might be, hmm. especially if it's an admittance that I was wrong or an admittance that it was my fault. So the five ideas way of handling a relationship is the best opportunity a relationship has for being dynamic and for being positive and being long-term is for you to become the best version of yourself. So when you find conflict, first of all, look within. Mm -hmm. Look inside of yourself and say, "What, what am I doing or what am I overlooking or what could I have missed? So that's where I go. So before I would go and say, hey, Joey, you did this or you did that, I would go back and go, how did I communicate to Joey? Did I leave out any details? Is there anything Is there anything that I could do? Was I in a bad mood? Was I ticked off? Was I? <laughs> so I want to become the very best version of myself. And I tell this to clients all the time because a lot of my clients are working through conflict issues, whether sure. at work, home, wherever, with their kids. And I tell them all the time, when you don't feel like you can do anything about the other person, become the best version of yourself. Hmm. Start with communication. And if communication doesn't unlock the door, back up and don't try to kick the door down. (laughs) Back up and become the very best version of yourself. I heard you say once that you, you talked about if somebody did something to you that you didn't like, one thing that you can do is say, how do I never do that to the, to another person and make them feel the same way? Yeah. And I cannot, I kind of feel like that's what you just said. Like if, if I'm trying and the other person maybe isn't, I can still become the best ver- version of myself and I can still take all those, all those maybe negative things that are coming towards me from the other side of the relationship. Yeah. And I can store those and say, I don't like how this is making me feel. Let me add those to a list of things yeah. not to do yeah. back okay. or to somebody else. Yeah, you opened a big door right there. You opened a door to one of our categories of faith and spirituality, and let me tell you why. I believe in the principle of grace. Grace is you you don't you give somebody what, what they haven't earned or mm. deserved. So a highest level of a relationship is when you treat somebody, you give somebody even the things that they don't deserve. Wow. And whatever's happened to you that has been negative, instead of you giving that to other people, you say, no, I'm not going to do that because that hurt me deeply. Wow. Your point. I'm going to give them grace. And people say, well, they didn't deserve that, right? But that's what grace is. But that's a higher, deeper level of spirituality where we have received something that we didn't earn and we didn't deserve. Th- thank you for joining us on this episode of Five Ideas. Um, I might actually, I'm going to, I actually listen to all these episodes. I've listened to almost, I think I've, I've listened to all of them. I think I've listened to all of them at least twice. Some of them I listened to three, four times. 
I'm probably going to listen to this one twice. And uh, I know, because I've got to listen to what you just said again, and I've got to take some notes on that because these ideas can be so powerful and they can change the relationships that you're in today. Thank you for joining us on this episode. And we're so excited to see you on the next episode of Five Ideas. Five Ideas.